Good morning and welcome to another Cat Chat Live webinar. My name is Nancy Stevens and I oversee parent and family communications for the university. I'm so glad that you've made time to join us this morning to learn more about UK Transportation Services. Before I turn things over to my colleagues with Transportation Services, I have a few housekeeping announcements for you. As a reminder, if you have not been part of one of our Cat Chat Lives already this summer, we can't see or hear you. So we're using the um, Zoom Q&A feature to take your questions. Um, so we hope you have questions. We're going to take as many as we can during our time together this morning. We'll plan on being together about an hour. So please do submit those questions using the Zoom Q&A feature. After Transportation Services presents all of their slides, we'll start taking those questions live. So you've got a few minutes to be thinking about your questions. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. It will be sent to all registrants after the fact. It will also be posted to the Cat Chat family community after today's webinar. If you have questions that we're not able to get to live today, Transportation Services will leave you with their contact information, but you can always email parents at uky.edu to get assistance from our team as well. After today's webinar, you will get a survey, and we hope you'll take a few minutes to give us your feedback on Cat Chat Live and how it met your needs today. We do have more Cat Chat Lives planned, um, continuing through the next few weeks. You'll see on the screen a um, schedule of what we have to come. This Wednesday, we'll be joined by um, our colleagues in financial aid, student account services, and financial wellness to talk about financing UK and financing life. Then next week, we'll hear from the Director of Residence Life and our Director of Student Conduct, the first on Monday, the, the second on Wednesday. And I think those are going to be really helpful, particularly for our families of students living in our residence halls. We'll continue into August with um, webinars on getting involved on campus and wellness. That wellness webinar was just added last week. Registration links for all of these webinars are in the Cat Chat family community. Hopefully by now you have um, discovered our Cat Chat family community and been taking full advantage of all the resources in their um, email newsletters, the opportunity to connect more with topics relevant to your students' experience. Um, you know, there are event calendars in there. It's where you'll register for family weekends. So lots of nice features in the Cat Chat family community. If there are um, family members of yours who haven't joined our Cat Chat family community, they can go to the website on the screen and create or update a profile at any time. As I mentioned, Family Weekend registration is taking place in our Cat Chat family community. Family Weekend is planned for September 20th through the 22nd, and all the information that you need to make plans is on the Family Weekend website, and then the registration form is in the Cat Chat family community. So we hope you'll make plans to join us, talk to your student about how you may want to spend that weekend. There's a really fun schedule of events planned by my colleague, the Director of Parent and Family Engagement, Nikki Jenkins. And so I hope you'll take full advantage of everything going on. And so I want to keep my announcements brief because I know you're eager to hear from transportation services. So I'm going to turn things over to my colleagues. I very much appreciate you all being here with us today. I know it's going to be a busy day for you all and that you have so much good information to share with our families and any students who may be watching. So thanks so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa Cleveland. I'm the communications officer for UK Transportation Services. And um, what we plan to do today is talk a little bit about uh, parking permits, buses, and bikes on campus. So have them joined by two other colleagues who will introduce themselves uh, in just a little bit. But let's jump right in to uh, permits. So I, I wanna say, first of all, um, and I always say this during student orientation meetings, Personal vehicles are entirely optional on UK's campus. You, uh, it's a very uh, easy campus to get around, uh, very walkable. Uh, we have a bus service that Andrew will talk a little bit more about later um, and bikes are an excellent option as well. So personal vehicles are entirely optional. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a vehicle on campus unless you uh, have to travel a lot outside of, of this area. 
Um, if you do bring a vehicle to campus, if your student brings a vehicle to campus, you are required to have a parking permit. And I'm sure most people know that by now. They are actually, uh, we're actually in the middle of sales as we speak. Um, so, you know, we, right today, actually, at noon today, uh, residential permits go on sale, um, as well as residential periphery and remote permits. Those will all go on sale at noon today to all students. Um, we do um, like to tell people up front that if you um, park on UK's campus, we do enforce uh, the parking rules and regulations. Um, it's, it's a busy campus. We have a lot of demands for parking. So, it's, so we do enforce the regulations and just be prepared for that. Um, but you do have a lot of different options in terms of parking permits. So I'll talk a little bit about some of those. As I mentioned earlier today, uh, residential permits go on sale to all students. Um, so new students will get an opportunity if they're an on-campus resident to buy a residential permit. Those are a little bit harder to get. They are uh, first come first serve sort of thing. Um, but residential permits allow a student to park a little bit closer to their residence halls. And that's why uh, a lot of students really want to get an R or residential permit. They do, um, those residential areas are uh, patrolled for that specific permit 24 seven. So um, if you do get a residential permit, <clears throat> they um, do provide a little bit closer um, to your residence hall. And the type of permit that you get is tied to where you live on campus. Um, if you are not successful or don't really want a residential permit, you can all, always get a residential periphery permit. Those are uh, out at Kroger Field and, um, you know, are a um, probably the most common permit type for freshman students. So they're broken down, Resi our, our parking permits are broken down into whether you're a residential student or you're a commuter. So um, commuter permits <clears throat> are in some ways similar to residential permits in that they are a little closer in, but they do require that the student has 60 credit hours before they can purchase a commuter permit. Most freshmen will end up with either a residential periphery or a commuter periphery permit. Um, we also do have a permit type called remote permits. And that that is a, uh, it's open to residential students. It's a less expensive option than a residential permit. For example, if you want to have your vehicle on campus, but you don't need it that often, you're not going to move it that often, a remote permit is probably a good option for you because it's a, a considerably less expensive, but it does allow you to leave your vehicle on campus overnight. Um, we also have opened up those remote permits to students who may live in uh, nearby apartment complexes that don't offer enough parking for their residents, but they need to be able to have their vehicle at least somewhere close and they have to park it on campus, you know, overnight. They need a place to park overnight. So that's sort of an overview of the different permit types that we offer. Um, there are some specialty permits that I'll just very briefly uh, mention. ADA accessible permits are always an option. You do have to go through a process to um, get approved for an ADA permit, and all that information is on our website, all the details of that. Off-peak permits are also available for students who may just come to school or come to campus in the afternoons. They're usually after 3.30 p.m. So if your student is only taking evening classes, um, this may be a good option for them. They're a little bit lower cost, um, but they are for afternoon and evening parking. And then, of course, we have motorcycle and uh, motorcycle. Uh, motor scooter permits as well. Um, for short-term parking on campus, when you maybe come to campus to visit your student or you just need to run in really quickly, you can always park at a meter. 
Um, we have a couple of pay lots. The W.T. Young Library lot is one of them. And then at the Gatton Student Center. So um, Sports Center Garage and Cornerstone Garage are both public parking garages as well. So the fee is $2 per hour um, to park in those areas. And parking meters, that, that fee varies. Um, you would just have to look at the signage um, associated with that meter. And now I'll turn it over to Andrew to talk about buses. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Erickson and I am the transportation manager here on campus. Uh, handle all things buses, as well as a few other um, programs uh, that might be useful. And I'll, I'll mention those here uh, in just a little bit. Um, first thing uh, with, with campus buses is it really is the easiest way and best way to get around uh, campus. Um, we have multiple routes that will suit your needs. It is free to ride, uh, so you do not have to pay anything. Um, do not have to show any sort of ID to get on the campus bus routes. Uh, so it's very easy for, for students to get around. To go to the, the next uh, slide, I'll mention a few of our routes briefly. All right, uh, the blue and white route, this is the main route that most students will use uh, on campus during the week. It, it operates Monday through Friday uh, from 6.45 a.m. until midnight. Um, and then the way it runs is you try to run the buses every seven to 10 minutes. So if you may miss the bus before, know that another bus is on the way and will be there shortly. Um, our blue route uh, runs clockwise around campus and the white route runs the same route, just in the opposite direction, kind of clockwise. All right. I uh, didn't mention there quickly, uh, the yellow route, that is our weekend route that services North Campus all the way south to Kroger Field. Uh, so anybody that may be parking in the periphery there, um, that runs from noon until midnight uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. A um, couple other routes briefly, our, our green route um, will, it, it is kind of a, a short route that services our graduate uh, student housing as well as some periphery parking near the stadium. Um, almost sort of a connector route that will connect uh, students to the uh, main Grover Field bus stop at the West Blue Lot, and that will uh, allow students to transfer over to our blue and white routes to get where they need to go. And then uh, a new route that I'll mention that we are starting this fall is our purple route, um, and that is just running uh, um, a route around the stadium to those periphery parking areas. Um, just an eight to 10 minute route that will allow students to, to move quicker about campus. A couple other uh, things I'll mention, um, we, we are getting ready to introduce a new uh, bus tracking uh, system. It will be going through the transit app and more details will be available on our website once that is up and running in a couple of weeks. But this is just a great tool for students to use, um, you know, on their phone. They can pull it up and see where, where the next bus is engage, you know, if, if I'm in my dorm room and I need to see where the next bus is, you know, I can give myself enough time to get to that bus stop. A um, couple uh, tips that I'll share. Um, buses are only permitted to stop at bus stops. Uh, so they, they will not uh, stop if you're trying to flag them down in between stops. So you do need to be at the stop um, waiting for the bus to, to service that. Um, the route name will be displayed with an LED sign on the front of each bus. So it's very easy to differentiate uh, which route uh, the bus is servicing. And then when students are on the bus, in order to indicate that you need the next stop, there is a cord um, above the windows on the bus. You simply pull that cord um, to indicate the next stop is needed, or you can alert the driver by saying, next stop, please. Um, the last thing I'll mention with the campus buses is uh, we do have a um, an agreement with uh, Lextran, the city bus route. Um, that service is free anywhere in the city of Lexington that Lextran services. All you need to do is simply show your wildcard ID. A couple other programs I'll mention briefly um, is our airport shuttles. We offer these during... Um, academic breaks, so for the Thanksgiving break, uh, the winter break, as well as a uh, spring break. Um, and this service, uh, we run 
two shuttles. Um, so for example, Thanksgiving, we run two shuttles that Wednesday before Thanksgiving break um, from our Kroger Field out to Lexington, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky International Airport, as well as the Louisville Airport. Um, they, we have one that will leave at 7.30 a.m. and another that leaves at 1 p.m. Um, and then you can find the sign-up form is, is on the website. Um, simply fill out that form and uh, we'll have all your information uh, ready to go. And then as far as return trips, we, we offer return trips back to campus the day before classes resume. So for the example of Thanksgiving, that Sunday, I believe this year, it's December 1st. Um, from each airport, we have a shuttle leaving at noon and one at 7 p.m. And again, again that is that is free uh, for students to use as well. And then the last thing I'll mention is uh, a partnership that we have with the UK Student Government and Student Fee Council is our Wildcat Vouchers Program. And this is uh, a partnership with Uber, where we uh, provide, designed to give safe rides, responsible rides um, to students. Um, it operates Thursday through Saturday from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Um, there's a sign-up form on our website. Uh, simply fill that out and the vouchers will be sent to your Uber account. Uh, we provide uh, $10 off per ride, up to 10 rides per semester. And then I'll turn it over to Sam uh, to talk about bicycles. Um, that the uh, Uber voucher service, I just wanted to mention, it does service all of Lexington, Fayette County area. So it's not just limited to campus. And I'll turn it over to Sam to talk about bikes. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so yeah, uh, bicycles on campus, it's a great way to get around. Um, we're actually one of the national leaders in uh, providing services and programs to encourage people um, to use bikes. Um, so we can go ahead and get started with the next slide. Um, yeah, so like, as it shows there, we're a, we're a gold level university. So I think there's about 20 now and we're on the cusp of being platinum and there's about five of those. So we are uh, a leader in um, bicycles on campus. Um, just a few kind of ground rule stuff. Bikes are required to be parked at bike racks and we do, we spend a lot of money and a lot of time installing bike racks and, and reinstalling them in different places to accommodate student uh, students and uh, employees. Um, so please don't lock to handrails and that kind of stuff. If you feel like you're constantly not having a place to park your bike, um, you know, we have a we have a list or an email you can email us and a bike rack request form as well. Um, yeah, follow the rules of the road. Uh, you know, UK is one of the few places I think in Lexington where it makes sense to ride on sidewalks and, and uh, paths. Um, but just uh, you know, understand that there's also pedestrian users. Um, there are a few dismount zones around campus where you're required to dismount your bike um, and then walk it through that, um, just because of how narrow it is. Um, campus buses and Lexington buses are equipped with bicycle racks, um, which can really help uh, extend the range of your of your um, ability to ride. Um, and also, unfortunately, Lexington outside of UK, sometimes there aren't really safe roads to use depending on which direction you're going. And the using the bus to kind of get through those areas can be helpful. Um, we actually have one of those racks at Wildcat Wheels are on campus full service bike shop. So you can bring it in and you can practice using the bus rack. Um, so, you know, when you actually go to use it, you're not um, all nervous about holding up people on the bus or whatever. Um, bike permits aren't required, but they are encouraged. They're free. Um, you do have to come into um, 721 Press Avenue, our, our front office, um, to register, but they do allow um, you to you know, make an insurance claim if there is theft. We have a pretty low degree of theft, um, but it can help get your bike back, make an insurance claim, that kind of thing. We go ahead and move on. Um, so we have Big Blue Cycles, uh, which is one of our biggest um, uh, rental programs uh, for bikes. Uh, it's free. Um, they are for residential students. So if you live in the dorms um, or somewhere else on campus, um, they're exclusively for you all. Um, we only have 160, we're looking to expand that um, and it does get fully utilized. So if you're interested, I encourage you to apply now. Um, they come with uh, fenders and a lock helmet and a bell. So 
pretty much all ready to go for you to use it as your main method of transportation. Um, and then Wild, Wildcat Wheels Bicycle Library is our full service on-campus bike shop. We have a, a full-time employee who manages it plus student employees. So if you're interested in learning more about bicycle repair uh, or looking for a part-time job, it's a great uh, place to work, build up a skill set um, that you can use after college. And um, we're pretty work, work with you on, on your schedule and everything to be able to come in and still work um, around classes. So great place to work. You can also just bring in your bike to drop it off. Um, and it's worked on for free completely, or we will teach you how to do maintenance and you can work on your own bike. Um, so it's an amazing resource. There are basically nowhere in the country that offers what we offer for free. Um, there are some other on-campus bike shops, but nothing quite like Wildcat Wheels. So take advantage of that. It, we are also building a brand new $1.4 million bike shop that's going to be over on Sports Complex Drive, um, Parking Structure 7. Um, and so that's going to be really exciting. That should open January. We just started construction on it. So we're improving uh, our services and our infrastructure constantly. Um, so yeah, encourage you to take, uh, take advantage of that. Um, we move on to the next slide. Um, all right. I think that's probably it for me. I think Lisa, is this you, uh, follow up on this? Yeah, I can uh, tell you a little bit about uh, online services. So we, um, our website is a great uh, resource for you. Um, tons of information, probably more than you would ever want to know. But if you have a question, it's a great resource for you and your students. Um, we have parking maps online. We have bus routes online. You can purchase and renew your permit online. Uh, and you can manage your transportation account. And by that, I mean, you can add vehicles that you, you know, that you're going to be driving on campus. You can ask for um, license plate changes if you get a, if you have to, you know, I have a temporary plate, but then you get a permanent plate. Um, you can pay and appeal citations online. And you can sign up for our uh, transportation e-news, which I encourage you to do um, because we do send out a lot of information about uh, impacts to parking lots, for example, if there's maintenance issues going on, or if there are um, traffic issues that you need to be aware of, or special events, that sort of thing. So it's it can help you sort of know um, what's going on on campus, maybe areas that you might want to avoid on a specific day because there's something happening in that lot. Um, and also just to find out about um, all of the programs. We are a pretty large department. So, you know, buses and bikes and um, are just, you know, they're, they're very large programs just on their own. So uh, lots of information to share through the e-news. We also, we're also on X at UK Parking. Um, so I think that might be on the next slide, but maybe not um so i can tell you you can if you're if you're on x you can follow us on uh twitter formerly or x formerly known as twitter um we are located in the press avenue garage um 721 press avenue our hours are 7 30 a.m to 5 p.m monday through friday um so you can either you know you can call us uh 859-257 Five seven five seven, or you can um, stop by in person. Um, I'm not sure if there's another slide after this or not that has all our contact. Yes, so there's our email address, um, all of our social media accounts. We're pretty active on those as well, and we do share a lot of information through there. Um, so I'd encourage you to you know contact us. We probably received I don't know maybe thirty emails a day, maybe on average maybe thirty to forty um, that we do try to answer within twenty four business uh, hours if possible. So that's a great way to reach out if you have questions. Um, but we're we're pretty much always available seven thirty to five. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about. Or, or turn it over to Andrew uh, and Sam for, for their areas. All right, thank you all so much for that good information. Families have been asking questions as you've been talking, and so let's review some of their, their questions together. 
So the first question is, are there specific locations we should try for based on our students' residence hall location? Um, and in this particular case, students um, in one of the Woodland Glens. So wondering like where in a perfect world they should try to, to get parking. Um, so yes, um, there are, uh, we do allocate residential permits based upon a residence hall where that location is. So the easiest way to find out what you're eligible for is to go to our website, go to uh, student permits, and then you can look at residential permits and sort of drill down into that. Um, it will, we, literally in that drop down, it'll tell you which, which um, either surface lots or garages you actually qualify for. And then you can look at the parking maps also online and figure out which is closest to you. Um, in many cases, you'll have, you know, several options, not just one option. So you're, you might want to, you know, do a little research and figure out your first choice and then your second choice, you know, and sort of go down that line. Because when you do log in to purchase your permit, it will only show you what you're eligible for, what you're, what you're eligible to purchase. Does that sort of answer the question? Yeah, and it, it speaks to one of these other ones that, that came in. Um, person says, when logging in for parking permits today, there are no options listed on my daughter's account to purchase. She does have a housing assignment. Do the options show up at noon today or should they be showing up right now? No, that's we do get that question a lot. They don't go on sale until noon. So uh, you won't see those options until you log in at noon. And we do that because we want to give everyone an equal chance to you know, have the ability to get one of those residential permits if that's what they're looking for. So I wanna, there's, there's never gonna be an, a chance where you won't get a permit. Uh, you'll either get a residential permit or you'll get a residential periphery permit. So they're not, it's just a matter of, do you get the permit that you really, really want? And that's why we open it up at noon. Now, in some cases, um, if there is, a, if there, if you log in, but you're not seeing any options, it could be that we have in the past had, you know, your residence wasn't assigned at the time that the import was made. So, you know, I'm not going to say there's not going to be any glitches, but, but we are uh, going online right at noon. So. All right. And in the event of one of those glitches, I assume they just need to reach out to you all. Yes. The best option at that point would be to call. Uh, we do have a full, we're fully staffed today. We've got a lot of our permitting folks just up front, so they'll be able to help you um, over the phone. All right, good deal. All right, this next question is from somebody who I think is going ahead and planning for the worst case scenario. Um, and it's, will violating vehicles be towed or continue to accrue tickets? Um, if vehicles are towed, who is the service and where is the impound located? So maybe based on their knowledge of their student, they're already making a plan. A little worried about that. Okay, I understand. Um, so that is a, um, uh, it's a, it's a genuine concern, but I, I want to say we don't tow, uh, we do not tow students or any vehicles. You have to work really hard generally to get towed, uh, which means that you probably have uh, accumulated at least four citations that have been unpaid. So as long as you sort of stay on top of your account, uh, pay us. If you get a citation, we always encourage you to go ahead and pay it. You're not going to get towed until you have accumulated a, a lot of cite. Four is a good number of citations. Or if you're for, if you're parked on a red line like a fire lane, that is an immediate you know, that you can immediately be towed for that sort of thing um, for, for safety related issues. But as a general rule, um, you do have to work pretty hard to actually get towed. And we use Robert's Towing uh, Company. Um, and the, the impound lot is actually, one of our impound lots is actually just right outside our office. So here on Press Avenue. All right, so hopefully they don't ever need that information, but it's out there in case they do. Um, we've got a couple of questions about whether the permits for um, K-Lot at Kroger Field sell out. I think there's some folks who are, are working with their students to determine whether they need a car or not. So they may not initially bring one, but may want to for spring semester. So they're wondering about both permit availability and options to pay just for one semester if they decide to add a permit later. 
So that's a really, that's a great question because um, when parents come up to me at orientation tables, for example, I always tell them if you are, you know, if you're not sure you need a vehicle, maybe try it for a semester without one. Um, residential periphery permits and commuter periphery permits, they don't sell out. So, and they're also available by the semester. Those are the only permit types that you can purchase by semester. But in reality, you can purchase that at any time during the year and it's a prorated cost. So if you decide at some point that you do need your vehicle, you can always come in and get one of those permits. They don't sell out. All right, I think we had, had three or four people who'd answered that. So appreciate that, that good information. All right. So I got a couple of busing questions for, for Andrew. One is, do buses run on game day? Asking about specifically football or basketball. My guess is that the, these folks are also wondering about being able to use buses to get to Kroger Field, to get to um, Rupp Arena. Sure, yes, that's a good question. As far as uh, the football games, the yellow route, uh, since that is the route running on Saturdays, it does continue uh, to run uh, on a normal schedule. The, the route does um, detour slightly once the uh, game starts. Instead of making it all the way to Kroger Field, it reaches the as far south as the Seton Center. So it'll get you within a couple minute walk of, of the stadium area. And then as far as uh, basketball games to Rupp Arena, we, we currently don't offer any um, any bus shuttles um, to Rupp Arena for, for basketball games. All right, here's another um, bus question for you and relate to the airport shuttles. Um, when at the airport coming back from break, where will the shuttles be for boarding? So um, I guess a, a bigger question there is how do you communicate with students who've signed up for the shuttle so that they know how how to be, you know, where to be, uh, when to be there and all that good stuff? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. We On our website, we have detailed information as far as pickup locations um, for each airport for Lexington. Louisville and Cincinnati. Typically, it's right outside uh, uh, baggage claim to make it easy, but uh, there's there's specific directions for each airport. Um, we also the we use Gold Shield as our uh, a vendor that provides these shuttles for us, and they uh, the drivers will have signs that indicate that they are the UK shuttle running back to campus, and then usually a day or two before the shuttles leave, um, we will send out communication via email. And that'll have a point of contact as well for the day of if, if students have trouble um, missing or finding the shuttles or maybe a flight delay, something like that. They'll have a point of contact they can reach that day. Uh, so we, we can make things work out for them. Yep. So students need to keep an eye on, on their email for that good mm -hmm. stuff. All right, Andrew, we'll leave you on the hot seat a little bit longer. Um, if my student has a class outside of the blue and white routes, um, you know, for example, maybe in the, the ag part of campus, what bus should she take? How, do, how will students figure out kind of the bus routes that they should use? Right. Um, the good thing is part of uh, I know, our app that we'll be running out with, uh, you know, you can use Google Maps or Apple uh, Maps as well. You can put in a destination um, and it will kind of give you turn by turn directions on which route would be best for you. Um, all our bus stops are designed to be within a, a, a few minute walk of any location on campus. Um, and, and the good thing about blue and white route, we're running in opposite directions. So you can get anywhere on campus um, eventually, depending on which one you get in. It's just a matter of where exactly you're taking the bus to will determine which route to take. All right, here's a, another bus question. My daughter said the UK buses will be running a route to and from Kroger and Target during K week. Is this true or do they need to use the city buses? Uh, that will be, uh, I believe, using city buses. There is, uh, I believe, Target right adjacent to campus. Um, well, they have access there as far as I'm um, aware. Uh, the city the bus route will be the one. And again, that, that can be used with a uh, Wild card ID to show that for the driver that's free of free of cost. All right. Next bus question. How will how well lit are the bus stops at night? So thinking about the safety of using the buses. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, obviously safety is uh, you know the primary importance. And we, we make sure that there are um, you know, well lit areas um, you know, at, at all the stops to uh, maintain safety for students. So there, there is light in there. 
All right. And then um, will the buses be running on family weekend so we can get an idea of where our student is traveling to and how long it will take for um, them for their schedule. So uh, as a reminder, family weekend is uh, mid-September, the 20th through the 22nd. Yeah, all, all of our bus runs will run as, as scheduled during family weekend. All right. All right. We'll take Andrew off the hot seat for a minute and go back to some of our permit questions. Um, when paying for a permit, are the fees added to the student's account or is it, does it have to be paid immediately with a credit card? There are a couple of questions around, um, you know, can the, the parking permit be charged to financial aid, how, to, how the payment for that works? Yeah, we, uh, we do get that question a lot. You can, uh, transportation services is an auxiliary department, which basically for this purpose means that we are, um, our funds are just handled separately outside of financial aid or anything else uh, on campus. So it is, you know, you would need to pay for your parking permit up front. Yeah, it's not connected to your student account in, in that way. And is there a payment plan um, option of any sort? Um, at this time, no, we don't really have the capability to handle some sort of a payment plan. Um, you know, there's a couple of options. If the if cost is a concern, I would say, you know, look at some of the lower cost permit types. You, if you're a residential student, you may really want to look at the remote permit, which is a, a very reasonable cost. Or you might want to think about uh, either, per, you know, maybe just purchasing a one semester at a time, which you can do with residential periphery or commuter periphery permits. So that would be my advice on that. Those are some good tips. Yeah. Um, we have a few questions asking what information they need to be ready with um, at noon today or whenever they sit down to purchase a permit. Um, what, what are they going to be asked for? So you're going to need to log in with your Link Blue ID and your password. Um, you will need the make, model, year, and color of and license plate number, if I didn't say that already, of your vehicle. You have to have your vehicle information in order to purchase a permit. Um, and then just, uh, you know, whatever payment that you want to use for that. All right. Yep. So here was a, as I'm scanning the questions here, someone is yeah, asking if you have to have vehicle information today when purchase permits. <laughs> so yeah, you will be asked for those, that license plate information. And my understanding is that they can swap that out at any point. If it's a, yes. a different car that they end up bringing, that can be updated in their, their it online. Can, and you could also have more than one vehicle on your account. Now you might just log, you know, you, when you're logging in today to set or setting up your account, you might just want to put one vehicle on it, but you can have more than one vehicle. If you're, you know, sharing a vehicle with your uh, family and you're not always driving the exact same vehicle, you can have more than one. You just can't have um, more than one vehicle on campus at the same time. So um, and then a follow-up question related to that just came in. What if we don't know what specific car is going to be used? Do they just need to enter something at this point to be able to purchase the, the yeah. permit? Use what you think you'll be driving, um, what you expect to be driving. Um, and then if that changes, we can always update it. You can either do it yourself through our customer account, through your, you know, by logging in. Or you can email us or call us and we can make the changes for you. We've got a couple of questions related to um, visitor parking, you know, about um, like to, if temporary parking permits are available for like a weekend, if somebody's coming to visit for a slightly extended period of time, what visitor um, parking options would you sure. recommend there? So um, it's on the weekends, many of our parking lots are not on control. Okay, so that basically what that means is that um, usually on uh, Friday after about 3.30 uh, through the weekend, there's many, many places on campus where you can park without any kind of uh, permit, you know, because it's just open on the weekends. Um, there are some areas though that are controlled for permits 24 seven, that, that would be the residential areas, some reserved spaces, that sort of thing meters, pay, pay lots. Um, so, but you have a lot more options on the weekend for completely free parking. Okay. Um, during the week, we can, uh, give you a single day permit. Um, you can contact our, 
permitting department and they can set you up with a one day permit if you want to um, be on campus, for example, all day and you don't want to park at a meter because that would get a little bit more expensive. So you might contact our permitting department ahead of time and say, hey, I'm going to be visiting this day. I need a single day permit or what can you do? You know, what do I need to do to park on campus all day? If you're only visiting during a like a short time, few hours, um, then you might want to use one of the pay lots, the Gatton Student Center, uh, the library lot, or um, a, the two garages I mentioned earlier, which are visitor garages as well, and that's Sports Center Drive and Cornerstone. Um, if you have any questions at all, though, about uh, parking on campus short term, I would recommend you call our office and our staff will, you know, do their best to work with you to make sure you have what you need for that particular situation. We also um, work really closely, like if there's special events and things like that, we have a team that um, works closely to uh, works closely with the organizers of the event to make sure, you know, any attendees have parking plenty, but that, that has to be done sort of in advance. So while you're talking about weekend parking, we've got a couple of questions about vehicle relocation from K-Lot on, on football weekends. I know this question comes up um, at every orientation and our, our student leaders talk about how convenient it is to move their cars closer on the, not only game day weekends, but on every weekend. So if you could speak a little bit more to that and how students find out about their options. Um, sure. So we, uh, one of the reasons I, I do try to encourage people to sign up for our e-news is that we send out notices and say, you know, just a reminder that says, hey, there's a home football game this weekend. You're going to need to relocate your vehicle. Um, so I would encourage you to have, you know, to sign up and have your students sign up for e-news just to get those reminders. Um, I think there's only eight home games this year, so not a whole lot of moving. It seems to cause a lot of concern. Um, you know, students come up and they're they're worried about moving their vehicle. Um, but it's really easy to relocate your vehicle on the weekends because we do, you know, we don't have, most employees are not on site, our lots open up considerably. Um, there's just a lot of areas where you can move your vehicle to. So the, the big thing is just remembering to move it. It's really not the, you know, the difficulty of, of moving it somewhere else. It's just remembering to do it. Um, and you can go online. Uh, we have a, a game day relocation map online. Um, it's under our maps tab. So there's a lot of areas there that you that open up that you could move your vehicle. Um, there's certain times that you have to move your vehicle. Um, I'll be sending out a notice prior to the first game with all the details, but you can also look at parking, uh, game day parking on our website and get all the details there as well. It, I hope that sort of answers the question. It's it's easy to do. It's something that causes people some concern, but it's but it do it one time and they're fine. You know, they there's no issue. So yeah, that was helpful. Here's a question. How long does it take to get approved for an ADA permit? You know, I wish I could answer that question, but I don't actually deal with ADA permits. Um really at all. I know uh, that you have to start with the uh, Disability Resource Center, I believe. And there's so there's a process that a student would go through to get an ADA permit. You do have to have a UK ADA permit too. It's not like just a state issued ADA permit will not suffice. You have to go through the process of getting a UK ADA permit. Um, that all of those details are on our website and we have someone on staff who handles ADA permits um, as part of her regular job duties. So um, her name is Betty Webb, uh, Webb and I would recommend that um, if you have questions about ADA permits, first go online, uh, go under student permits and you'll see a tab for ADA and there's complete details. There's a lot of information there as well as information to the forms that you would need. But if you also just wanna talk with someone about it, then just call our permitting department. Anyone in that front office can walk you through that process. I don't think it's a really time consuming thing, but it it is a process that a person goes through. So it might take 
you know, a couple of weeks. Um, I don't, I, I, that's a guess. I would just say, you know, you might want to call and double check for sure. Yeah. Starting sooner rather than later is never a bad idea. So we've got a few questions related to safety. Um, you know, the, uh, here's one about, you know, are lots and garages monitored with video surveillance? Um, most, I, I think it's true to say that most of our um, garages and many of our lots, I don't know if all of our lots are, um, our department doesn't really handle that side of things. That's handled by UK Police Department. So while we manage the parking inventory, we don't really, safety falls under their purview. Um, there are cameras in some of the structures. I know that for sure. And I think there are on some of the lots as well, but honestly, that's more of a UKPD um, responsibility. Um, and probably, I'm sure if you reached out to them, they could tell you more than I can about that. Yeah, we are um, planning a, a cat chat live with UK police. We have not um, settled on a time yet, but that'll be a good question to ask them when we talk to them in, in August. Yeah, we work really closely with them if there's any concerns at all. If we learn of any concerns, we work really closely with them. And we also work really closely with uh, UK physical plant. So physical plant, you know, they're the the folks that would go in and replace lighting if there's a light out, for example, somewhere. Um, and sometimes we'll get emails and people will say, oh, you know, there's a light out in this stairwell. And so we will work very closely with UK physical plant to make sure that light is replaced. So we do work closely with those two departments, but it's really under their umbrella. All right. Here's a question about um, the per the residential permits going on sale today, and it's residential today and commuter tomorrow. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So would we have a better chance to get a residential um, permit if we come in person to Press Avenue? Um, I think you probably have a better chance online, um, but I don't, I, it's, I mean, it's not an exact science. I don't honestly know uh, if you're standing here in line and at a counter, you might be able to get one pretty quickly. But I mean, I don't I don't know if if it's faster to do it. I know our permitting staff usually says it's a better uh, idea to do it online. But that's it's all the knowledge I have about that one. And it varies, you know, not all the permits sell out really quickly. I mean, there are a few that do. Um, Hilltop Avenue Garage is a popular one. That's an R2 permit. That one sells out pretty quickly. Um, Cornerstone uh, can sell out, but we've we've allocated more spaces in Cornerstone uh, this year. So, you know, there's some that really like an R10 that, you know, may be available a week from now. So they don't all sell out like in seconds or anything. Right. I think people may be picturing a Hunger Games kind of or, thing. Or here or or something. I don't know. Dude. <laughs> I know there's a lot of, you know, people want to park where they want to park. It's a very personal thing. And, and I understand, we understand that, you know, um, there, some permits are just more popular than others. And then how do um, students get their permit? Is it something that they pick up at move in? Is it something that's mailed to them? How do they get those permits? So you can do it a couple of different ways. You can, if you order, if you order it early enough, uh, you can, like today, if you were going online today, you can ask for it to be mailed to your home, or you can choose to uh, stop by and pick it up if you'd prefer to do that. All right, here's somebody who's thinking ahead, like our person who was thinking ahead to the, uh, what happens when my student's car gets towed. Here's one asking what happens when lots of snow is expected. Do students have to move their cars for um, uh, the snow to be plowed? What happens in, in inclement weather situations? You know, I don't think we've ever asked for students to move their vehicles for snow plows. Uh, I, I've been here five years and I don't think we've ever asked for that. Maybe Andrew, do you know? I don't No, there's there's no relocation in the, no. you know, if we have too much snow, there's no, no. relocation required. 
Uh, and just, Andy, do the buses run uh, yeah. normally when when inclement weather is happening? Yeah, so they they will still operate. Um, you know, according to how bad it is, if, if the situation becomes too, you know, it's not safe, then they may have to temporarily halt uh, the routes. But they do still run. If, even if classes are canceled for snow, they still run on campus. Yeah, and that's where that uh, signing up for the transportation e news is really helpful. Following them on social media, those are the the places that I always look for those kind of um, unusual updates uh, for inclement weather or special events and and all of that. The the communication is there, um, and we certainly try to share a lot of the transportation e news updates in the Catch Hat family community as well. All right, here's a great question that just came in. If um, there's assistance needed for a car battery jump or other minor car support, um, can transportation services help with that or campus police or, or what would they do in the event of needing some motorist assistance? Yeah, we do have a program. I should have mentioned that earlier uh, for motorist assistance. So if you have a permit and you are parked on campus, uh, you can call us and ask for a jump start, and we'll send someone out free of charge to uh, provide a jump start for you. And there's also um, other services that we offer at discounted rates. Um, so we have a tab on our website um, with all the details about motorist assistance. So um, there are quite a few um, perks uh, for permit holders. And one of them is free jump starts if you need it. We've got a, a few questions of folks trying to better understand the different permit types, you know, what permit is C-16, or if a student has an R-10, can they also park an R-K? So is it the website the best source of information if they try to figure out specific permit types? It really is because uh, generally what happens is you, you there, there's maybe not, this is not the best way to say it, but you can park down. So like if you have a residential permit, generally you can park in a periphery area as well. Um, but all those details are um, broken down by permit type on the website. And if you do, if there is a specific permit that you have and you want to know, you know, what does this uh, in, authorize me to do, you can always reach out to us directly too. And we will we'll answer all those specific questions. We get a lot of questions like that over our listserv, you know, that are really specific to the individual and they just don't quite know what they can do and we we can walk them through that it is on our website but if you still feel like you just need a little bit more assistance we can help you with that as well it's kind of hard to generalize because there's a lot of different permit types yeah sure i know uh when you're first learning about all of the different um options it can seem overwhelming but it, it makes sense as you you um, spend more time here and get to know it a little bit better all right. I know that we've had some folks answering some questions behind the scenes. Are there any that um, we've answered in the Q&A that we want to speak to more directly? Andrew, I think you answered um, some behind the scenes, maybe, and I think Samuel did as well. Anything we want to share for the, the good of the group? Yeah, one, one thing for my, and uh, somebody mentioned uh, fall break as far as the airport shuttles. Uh, we currently don't uh, offer a uh, airport shuttle for fall break. Um, when I get asked about what students do for um, kind of when they're traveling outside of major breaks, you know, I, I think the options tend to to be kind of word of mouth. Like, I, well, I talked to a friend and they were also going to such and such a place. So we we arranged to ride together. What kind of tips do you generally share for folks who are traveling um, outside of those major breaks? Yeah, that's the main thing is you know, word of mouth. Try to see if you can coordinate a, a ride with a friend. Uh, somebody like that, or we've we recommended ride sharing services in the past, such as Uber. That's an option. Yeah. Um, I know Samuel answered some questions behind the scenes about scooters, and I know that that's uh, something that has been shared on, um, you know, through the e news in the past. Samuel, is there anything that you'd be willing to share with the group about scooters or any of the other questions that you answered in the Q and A? Um. No, I think I answered them all. I mean, we just don't have the infrastructure currently in the laws, or at least um, the regulations right now are that you can't charge any sort of e-scooter or skateboard or bike indoors um, or store them in residence halls. Um, so that kind of limits you um, in 
and what you can bring to campus. I mean, you, you can definitely bring a scooter or a, a skateboard or that kind of thing, but charging it is, is kind of you're on your own. We're looking into charging options, but um, I mean, this is a nationwide issue. Every campus bike coordinator and transportation manager I've talked to is trying to figure out how to um, provide these kinds of services. Um, so right now it's, 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 you're kind of on your own. You just can't store them or um, charge them indoors. And can you speak a little bit to maybe um, the safety, you know, um, you know, securing a bicycle. So obviously these things that folks are bringing have value. So what's the best way for them to secure them? Um, yeah, I mean, use a good U-lock. Um, we use Avis U-locks um, when we give out um, uh, rental bikes. Um, I've never really had a problem with uh, securing your bike on campus, you know, as, as long as you're checking on it occasionally and, and, you know, I encourage you to kind of move it or use it. Um, that's usually, but uh, I mean, bikes sit unattended for years here. I mean, we, we only just started impounding bikes again last year and there's some that have been sitting in the same place for three years um, and no one touched them, even some of them on lock. So we thankfully don't have a huge culture of theft here, um, which is really great. Um, so if you just take kind of basic precautions, um, you shouldn't have a problem. If you have a really expensive bike, like maybe you're a road cyclist or a, a mountain bike, um, you're in a mountain bikes or something and you have something really expensive, we do have an indoor bike room. Um, it's not really convenient for most students. It's on the um, west side or south side. Is that right? Of uh, limestone, it's it's on the uh, where kind of near where our office is, um, in the Healthy Kentucky Research Building. So that's open to students. You can apply, and then you could store your bike indoors um, and lock it to the racks indoors, and that gives you a little bit more security. All right. Thanks for speaking to that. All right, I'm looking at the time and realizing we are coming right up on 11 o'clock and we have um, answered a whole lot of questions in this last hour. Are there um, any other tips or things that you have not gotten to share? Um, this is for, for any of you. Any final tips or thoughts that you want to share before we wrap things up? Um, muted. Yeah. Yes, I need to un unmute myself. If you do think of something that didn't get answered today, feel free to just reach out to us via email or call us. I mean, we are pretty um, good about trying to get back with people quickly. So anything that you feel like maybe a question that's just popped into your head, feel free to reach out to us directly. All right. Well, we appreciate your time today and sharing all this good information about transportation services and all the wonderful options that our students have on campus. Um, as Lisa was saying, reach out to them. If you have any additional questions, you can also always email parents at uky.edu to get assistance from the parent and family team at UK. We hope you can join us for the next Cat Chat Live on Wednesday at noon Eastern time. Um, uh, as a reminder, that one's about uh, financing UK and financing life registration for that and all other Cat Chat lives can be found in our Cat Chat family community. And that's also where you'll find a recording of today's webinar. Um, I anticipate posting that later this afternoon. So thanks again for joining us. Have a great rest of your day and go Cats!